Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Classes of Mail. My name is Alan Gigax, and today, dude, do we ever have a special guest? We are here with David Groskopf, president of NALC Branch 3 in Buffalo, which happens to be where my wife is from, and I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan, so this is extra exciting for me. And David is now the trustee for the Concerned Letter Carriers. David, say hello. Hello, Alan. And just yes. a keynote here, uh, I was promoted from trustee to now second in command of the CLC. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. We're with a real luminary. That is fantastic. Well, since we're already on the topic of the CLC, how did that get started? How did you get in with the CLC? Um, so last fall, we had um, our COP um, in Jacksonville. Okay. The um, Committee of Presidents. Correct. Committee of Presidents. Yep. And... Uh, there are a bunch of us that have been kicking this around for a while, and kind of uh, Ricardo Guzman out of San Diego um, was kind of the catalyst for this. Mm -hmm. He uh, got a hold of a bunch of us presidents that he knew were like-minded and said, hey, we're going to have a meeting here um, if you're interested um, in putting a group together to you know, try to fix what's currently going on with the NALC. Please be here at, at this time, right. and you know we'll discuss that. And that's basically what we did in Jacksonville is we – all got together. I think there were about 40 of us in that room that wow. night, and that's when the CLC was formed. Yeah, Ricardo is definitely motivated because his branch was the one that was burned when Renfro didn't show up, right? That was in San Diego, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, so the first time I saw Ricardo was at a Las Vegas uh, rap session, and he stood up at the microphone like right when the rap session started and called on Renfro to apologize, and it was a great moment. I said, that guy's got it, and obviously he does. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know a lot about Ricardo. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah. You know, but through the COP, and he did the same thing at COP, is mm -hmm. he got up at the COP, the previous one, to Las Vegas and attempted to question President Renfro, but unfortunately he was shut down and, and left the meeting. Um, and that's right. when, you know, I kind of went, okay, who is who is this guy? He's, right. You know, he's up there, he's asking the right questions. Yeah, it takes courage to do that within our union. You'd like to think that we have this solidarity, that we're all in it together, and that we're all kind of equals to some level. But there really is danger in speaking truth to power. Retaliation is real. It's very real. I mean, I experienced it in my local branch for, you know, approximately, you know, 20 years. Um, yeah. I was very good at what I did. Um, and I'm you know, kind of, you know, a competitive guy and right. I like to exert my will. I've been this way my whole life. I've been a competitor and, you know, my branch president didn't like that and they kind of blacklisted me and, you know, I was on the executive board, then they took me off the executive board and I fought my way back and in 2018, right. um, I didn't give up. I ran for president and I won overwhelmingly by a vote of three to one. I beat wow. the incumbent. Beat the incumbent. Yes. That's fantastic. For those of you who listen to my podcast regularly, you know I have a similar story that I'm running for vice president. I got kicked out of the Carrier Academy by my union president who, you know, was axe grinding in the same way. So, uh, so that's fantastic. So, so that's what prompted you to run for president. Well, so not just being blacklisted, though, and having an axe to grind against your old president, what is it that made you want, like, how did you want to serve your members by becoming a president? Be, the main reason that I ran for president of Branch Tree Buffalo, Western New York, yep. is because my local was run currently how NALC headquarters is run. Yeah. And I would point a lot of these things out. I was an actual trustee on the board. I checked mm -hmm. the books. I was questioning things. You know, people weren't really liking that. Right. And so they, they one day, one of the other guys came up to me and said, hey, just so you know, uh, you're, you're not going to be on the slate this time. I'm replacing you. The president didn't right. even have the common decency to come to me like a man right. and say, hey, I'm going to take you off this. He sent one of his folks over to do that. Um, and at that point, you know, that's when I said, um, I got to do something about this. Right. You know, the membership is not being served the right way. Um, so that's when in my head, I, you know, flipped the switch and said, I'm going to start working towards, you know, being president of the branch. Yeah. And, and exactly to your point, we have these same sort of problems on the national level with Renfro and with the administration we have up there with Barner. So aside from being anti Renfro, what is it that appeals to you about the CLC? Well, number one, the, the hope that it can, and it is going to give the average letter carrier on the workroom floor. Um, I'm on that workroom floor a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot of presidents, right. um, and carriers feel hopeless. And I like to believe, you know, that I'm doing a good job as president of Branch Tree Buffalo, Western New York. We're a very aggressive branch. 
uh, we're a very proactive branch, but there's still people out there, you know, that feel that way. And right. I don't want those people to feel that way. I've got, you know, 33 years in the Postal Service. When I started at the post office, you know, for the NALC, Vince Sombrato was the president. Wow. Yeah. And Vinny didn't take no shit. Right. You know, and I'm a New York guy. And yeah. if you know me, I mean, it's kind of runs through us. You know? Right, right. We and don't that's the take fight that. that's missing. Right Correct. Now. Yeah, that's yep. the fight. Listen. And I, I say this all the time. I mean, I'm all about diplomacy. I'm all about, you know, mm-hmm. going in there and trying to negotiate something. But in this current environment, I don't believe the Postal Service wants to do that, let alone is willing to do that. I almost feel yeah. like we're at war with our employer. I agree with that completely. From the top to the bottom, they're unwilling to settle grievances. Yes. They want to just drag us along. And as we keep hearing, as these contract talks roll out, Justice delayed is justice denied. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So getting back to your branch, which the stuff you've done at your branch is so impressive. You won the fight to stop SNDCs in Buffalo and to stop the movement of that processing plant. So how did you get politicians involved with that? So I'll start right from the beginning because I think people need to understand this. So we get notified, you know, roughly last January that this is going to happen. So like, uh, you know, every other president in the country, I call my business agent and say, hey, look, they're, we just got notice. They want to mm-hmm. um, move the PNDC in Buffalo, New York to Rochester, New York, and replace that with an SNDC. Right. Now, what I told my business agent is, I know 10 or 12 years ago, they tried to close, close the Buffalo plant. And what they did there is they sent the MBAs out to these public meetings there with talking go. points okay. to be there to inform the public. Right. So remembering this, I call the business agent and say, hey, are, are we, the NELC, yeah. going to do that this time? Right. My business agent didn't know. He said, let me call headquarters. I'll get back to you. Okay. So I wait, and he does get back to me, you know, very quickly. uh uh-huh. Calls me back and he says, Dave, he says, uh, nah, they're not not going to send anybody from headquarters and they're not going to send us out. That is so brutal. And I said, okay. So at at that point in my head, I said, all right, I'm on my own here. Yeah. I've got to figure out a plan to save, you know, Buffalo and Western New York service and delivery standards. And I'm going to be doing this basically kind of all by myself. You know, and the fear there, I've run into this in my own fights for my own carriers is now like, okay, I come to you because I expect us to be on the same team and I want your support. Now I have to worry because you said you're not going to support me. Am I going to have to fight against my own, like, am I, am I going to have to fight the business agent? You well, in, in this case, I don't have to fight the business Thank agent. Thank goodness for that. In at this least. case, I've been fighting Brian Renfro and his oh. tact on this the entire time. Yeah, that's a great point. He's been anything but supportive with, correct, this, yeah, correct. with the Delivering for America plan. So yeah. when I figure out that I'm all alone out there in right. the weeds by myself, I actually um, reach out to my counterpart in the APWU, the president of the APWU. Sure. Uh, oh, for, with a plant closure, they're going to be even more affected by it. Correct. Yes. So this is what I was telling everybody. I said, look, this isn't about us as letter carriers. Okay, this is about unionism 101. Absolutely. This is about solidarity. This is about backing up our brothers and sisters. And, you know, again, in these S&DC situations, do letter carrier, does the letter carry craft normally make out? Yes, but that's not the end all here. Mm-hmm. The number one thing is protecting our union brothers and sisters jobs. Absolutely. And number two, or even one, I would say, maybe that's one A, is protecting the American public service and delivery 100%. standard. percent right. Right? So Sending your mail to Rochester is not going to help the people correct. in Buffalo. Yep. So I say to myself, all right, I got to put a plan together. So, and I do that. I get a hold of the president of the APWU. We start to brainstorm. And for basically two months straight, I tell this story quite a bit. Um, I didn't leave the union hall every day till after 10 p.m. because oh I was God. on the phone working right. the politicians at the federal, state, and local level. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were talking to other unions. We were talking to other employees. We were calling up big, large mailers, businesses, mailing houses. Right. You name it. All the stakeholders. Right. I was, and then we met, we used a massive social media campaign in Western New York to inform the public if this right. happens, this is what's going to happen to right. your mail service in right. Western New York. And we were pointing to Atlanta, Georgia, and Texas, and right. Florida, oh, and all Atlanta's these places. Oh, Atlanta's a mess. Correct. Right? Yeah, with all those delays. Right. And if you have like drop shippers who come to the at PNDC in Buffalo, Buffalo, Canadian border, there's right. probably not a bigger uh, drop ship 
you know, port wow. in the country. <laughs> and and uh, the president, or I'm sorry, the postmaster wants to shutter that? It's unbelievable. We, Buffalo, in, in the history of the United States, Buffalo yep. has always been a major commerce route and always right. an international commerce route. We have businesses whose livelihood is just exactly what you said, right. drop shipments internationally. Right. The, our entire infrastructure is set up for that, and we're going, now you want to move this plant down the road to Rochester? No offense to Rochester, New York. Sure. Lovely people, but they don't have the infrastructure set up like we right. do in western New York. Yeah. So, they're not on the Erie Canal, are they? No, they're not. There you go. No, they're yeah, not. Exactly. So here's and this. So we start doing that. Now, as this is happening, mm-hmm. uh, probably the second uh, biggest supporter of postal employees that I know uh, was New York co- Congressman for the 26th District, Brian Higgins. Excellent. The only one I know bigger is Mr. Sanders, Bernie Sanders. Sure, that makes okay? sense, yeah. So Brian uh, is normally our go-to. Okay. He helped with that plant closure 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. Brian announced his retirement at the end of February. Oh, no. So my stallworth from a federal level that right. I had in my corner yep. is no longer there. So think about right. this. I'm not getting any help from any LC headquarters. Oh. I don't have a sitting congressman to help right. me fight this. Oh my so God. I don't want to say I go into panic mode, but I'm yeah. like, I have to do something different here. That's when I came up with not only are we going after everybody at the federal level, yeah. but we're going after everybody at the state level, and we're going after everybody at the city level. Right, because that doesn't just put pressure on the post office. It mobilizes the public. Correct. These are people who have their pulse on the community. They're yeah. all letter or they're all customers of the post office. Oh, yeah, office, absolutely. Right? Oh, every politician <laughs> is a huge mailer. Oh, my God, it's all about to start. Right. Oh, so, man. I'm, I start yeah. to mobilize that. I yeah. And we're lucky in New York. We do a very good job on both sides of the aisle getting help. Yeah. So, And that's exactly what I did. I started calling up everybody on both sides of the aisle, said, listen, this is the Postmaster General's plan. We can't allow that to happen. Right. Here's the talking points. Why? Please vet this. Check it out. Get back to me. We had everybody on board. That's okay? great. We got them all on board. And then we, you know, then we started the the basically the the public advertising we had a, a picket okay in front of the that plant 300 people on that picket line wow so let's talk about that then so not only do you have to get the politicians involved but you have to get your own carriers to buy in here's the again the disadvantage for us as letter carriers yeah we're having that picket when during the day oh right letter carriers are out delivering their routes so yeah. i knew the vast majority of my my membership yeah would be unavailable to me. That's why we were working a lot of the plant employees that worked on other shifts and everybody we could get over there during the day. Which, again, was why it was so valuable to partner with the APWU. Totally. Right. Totally. And they bought in, obviously, because it's their jobs that are on the line. Absolutely. And right. in, my, in my branch and the APWU, we've won several awards for what we've done in the community. Oh, that's several. fantastic. All right. So what about you get your, your carriers on the on, uh, you know, in line or supporting you. You get the politicians supporting you. The last step is the media. Yes. So it seems reasonably easy to get the media to buy into a postal story because we're still this huge part of the community. So how did that go when you reached out to the media? I didn't reach out to the media. The media loves me. The media media called me. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, It would not be the first time I've done an interview with a local newscaster in his shower, okay? (laughs) True story. I I swear to God. Um, the, The media there loves me because I do a very good job as the president of branch three with community outreach. Right. It's one of the main reasons that I try to talk to everybody. Why I think we were successful in Western New York is the brand labor is the community. The community is labor. Okay. We protect each other. We're in that community. For example, in schools, elementary schools, my carriers are talking about being mailman to little kids. We do touch a truck events, Juneteenth parade, labor day parade, corporate challenge, you know, we're out there in that community right. to show them we got their back. And when I needed them with this plant right. consolidation in s and they showed up to protect us. Yeah, the community, the public ju- has a default setting of loving the letter carrier. Absolutely. But when you take active steps to nurture that relationship, that love grows so strong. And then it's there when you need it, when you need to count on them back. So 
This is a really softball question, but we have to draw it out. What are the lessons that we take from this on a national level? The lessons we take on this from a national level is we can successfully fight this. And again, I've been in, whether it's the COP, whether it's our Region 11 wrap session, me and President Renfro have gone round and round on this. Mm -hmm. And he has a different view, and obviously I have a different view. And it was very important to me to prove to NALC headquarters that my view is correct, number one, and number two, that this could be done. And one of the, the talking points that headquarters, you know, and Brian use is, look, the network has to change. Okay. And we've got, a, there'll be a resolution coming up this week, uh, you know, an S and D C right, right. resolution, right. which they're going to disapprove, which I'm going to try to get to a mic on and talk about a lot of these things oh, yeah. I'm talking to yep. you about. And their position is simply this, well, something's got to be done. And when me and President Renfro were, you know, having our disagreement at the Region 11 RAP session, I right. told him, I don't disagree with you, Brian. The male makeup is different. Yeah. Things are different. However, the manner that this 10-year plan is being instituted right. is not working in community after community. That's exactly right. And I told him, I said, listen, if I'm you, I'm not telling you how to do your job, but if I am you, I'd simply go to the Postmaster General and ask him, look, Let's pause this thing nationwide. Mm-hmm. Let's take, for example, Atlanta, Georgia, that's an absolute dumpster yeah, fire. It is. Figure it out. Right. Let's perfect that. And then once we do that, start rolling that out to the rest of the country. Right. See how the timing will actually work. See if you can actually make it run on time. Like, you have to have a proof of concept somewhere to yes. see if it actually works. You know, just sending more freight through XBO Logistics is not always the answer. This is the United States Postal Service. (laughs) It's the most complex postal service in the world. And for somebody like DeJoy to come in here and think, well, because I'm a logistical expert, that's all it's going to take to do this. He's quickly learning that's Bush League, we're the major league. Right. When your only tool is a hammer, every problem is a nail. And right, all those problems are solved by trucks. Correct. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So... I would take that a step. Shit, I lost my train of thought. I got so wrapped up in what you were saying. Um, Oh, as far as fighting and and enlisting the public, you know, there's also this attitude that, well, we don't want to fight because, like, what if we lose? Then we look bad or whatever. But in my opinion, your SNDC fight is a great example of that. You know, if we do nothing, then that plant's going to get moved to Rochester. Correct. If we fight and we lose, the plant gets moved to Rochester. But if we fight and win... Now we've got something, and it's worth fighting for. At 100%, right. our job is to protect you know, our customers and those yep. service and delivery standards. I keep harping on this, but this should be the union's mentality, and it does not seem like it is, and that's the thing that's very frustrating to me. I had my own members tell me, why are you doing this? Uh-huh. I had a lot of people come to me and say Dave, you're wasting your time. Right. And every single time I told them, I don't care if I'm wasting my time. The the community of Western New York deserves this. Our constituents deserve this. You know, the people that we deliver to deserve this. And I, if I fail, that's okay. Right. But I can go home at the end of the day knowing I did everything that I could to protect those communities in Western New York. That's exactly right. So out in Las Vegas, our big enemy is the sun. And it's like that level of Super Mario where the sun is, like, chasing you through the desert. Oh, you were out there for the CLC 118 degrees, brother. It was very hot for a a polar bear like me. And so supervision will openly threaten us with later start times. And they'll say, if you guys don't all get out in an hour, then we're going to push your start times back from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock or whatever it is. And we've had stations in Las Vegas get their start times pushed back openly as punishment. And we take the fight to the union hall and they say, well, you know, our local agreement says they can push the start times once a year. And so I guess they can do it. And it's so frustrating. We want to because it's not just yes, they can, but that doesn't mean they should. There are provisions in the M39 that are like 80% of the mail. Correct. There's operational circumstances. Right. And in this case, where you guys are from, there's a safety circumstance. That's exactly and right. component that should be built into yeah. that. And so all of these should be fought. And ultimately, just like with the SNDC, if we lose, then we go to 9 o'clock. We haven't really lost anything, but we have to at least fight for our brothers and sisters. Correct. And here's the other thing, too. Like, as, you know, as the senior member, right, as as the president, as one of the older guys, because 
probably right now, 60 or 70% of my memberships old enough to be my own children. <laughs> sure. When you're in a leadership position, you have to lead. Right. You have to show these kids how to do this stuff. Absolutely. And if I just sat on my hands or sat in the union hall and didn't do yeah. anything, what kind of an example am I setting as the leader of Branch 3? That's I right. look at it like being a father. I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. you know, I've raised two daughters, you know, as a single parent, and I wouldn't allow that, you know, to happen with my own daughters. Right. And I look at those kids like they're my own. Yep. And that's what I said. I said, you know, worst case scenario, they're going to learn a hell of a lesson in how to go yeah. out there and put a street fight on. That's right. And at least the post office will know that we're not going to roll over. Correct. Yep. hundred percent. David, I think that's a good place to leave it. Okay. Thank you for coming on to Classes of Mail, and it has been a pleasure talking with you. Absolutely, my friend. All right. Thank you, sir. You bet.